obscure things like that, it's often how innovations come about. Yeah. <laughs> Just thinking about a problem in a drastically different way. Okay, let's get started. So uh, supplements uh, graded are up here, so go ahead and pick those up. So uh, I was actually really happy on, uh, I, I didn't do like any averages or calculation. I didn't even input the, those grades. But there were some really, really, really high grades. And it seemed like the average was a lot higher on this one than the midterm itself. So I've updated all of your uh, midterm plus supplement grades on, on Canvas. So you should see those now. Uh, any questions? What's due today? The written assignment. So, any questions? Should be interesting. Uh, okay. Any other? Any questions at all, though? About the, yeah, yeah. You get an instant minus a hundred if you use Comic Sans. The 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 worse the font color, the better. <laughs> White, white. <laughs> no, 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 white, white, white You have to highlight it all. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, light yeah. pink on yellow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> per perfect. Okay, uh, any serious questions? Or more serious, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right, so last time we were talking about what? Pointers. Pointers. So uh, can anyone tell me just what a pointer is in general? Yeah, it's just a memory location. That's all it is. And you specify what you're pointing to. So it's basically just a level of indirection. I have something over here. Uh, for some reason, which we'll get to eventually, we want to not reference it directly, but we want to be over here in this other corner pointing to that other thing. So we have something over here, and we want to point to it. Instead of just having it directly in our control, we are just pointing over to it. That's all a pointer actually is. And um, we talked about how to set up a pointer. So you say what type of thing you want to actually point to, in this case an int. You say star in the declaration to say this is a pointer. So the variable name int putter is a pointer to an int in this case. And then we say uh, int putter is equal to address of num. So remember, ampersand always means address of something. So num is a variable. We can take the address of it. So let's just say it's this address for a 0, 0. So then int putter, the thing it's pointing to is the address for a 0, 0. Because we're saying the value stored in the pointer, which is the the address it's holding is the address of num. So it is pointing to num. But if we do, if we want to actually look up the value from the thing that's being pointing, so from the pointer, I want to figure out what the value is there. I say star, uh, not in the declaration here because that's just saying it's a pointer. Here is actually doing what is called a dereference. It's looking up the value inside what it's pointing to. So in this case, uh, before this fourth statement, what is the value of star inputter? Before the 50 statement. So if I did like a C out uh, this, what would it print? Well, let's see. We, we set the, lo the thing it's pointing to to be the address of num. What is the value at address of num? It's 25. That's what I was going for. So uh, here what we're doing is we're changing the value of what it's pointing to. So from, it's basically a level of indirection. Instead of changing the value directly, we're changing it from over here doing a dereference to what it's actually pointing to. Uh, yeah, so here's the memory layout. Um, if we just print the pointer itself, no star, then that just prints the value inside the pointer, which is the address of the uh, variable. And star inputter prints 25 uh, if we don't have this statement here. 
I think this is what it was before we made the change last time. So if we did star inputter here, it prints 25. Uh, if we do star inputter equals 20, we're changing the value inside of num. So we're actually changing num and the value being pointing uh, of inputter at the same time because they're uh, referencing the same location. Num is just a normal variable. It's at some location. But inputter is pointing to the exact same place. So whichever way I change it, either directly or indirectly via the pointer, then both values change because they're really the same thing. Okay, so then we saw a relationship between arrays and pointers in that an array itself, the name of the array itself is just a pointer to the start of the array. And if I want to look up, say, index 1 of an array, we normally would just say square bracket with a 1 on the inside. But we saw that we can actually uh, use a different notation to do the exact same thing. Meaning, the starting address of the array plus 1 means move one whole location further. And then if you wrap the whole thing with a dereference on the front, then I look up the value in that place, the one location further, whatever that is. Well, in this case, it's inside the array, so we know that it's going to be one location ahead of the start of the array. The start of the array is 4 in this case, so the next place has value what? What is the next value after 4 in the array? Seven, good. So whenever, when I do this, when I say star of the start of the array plus one, meaning move one location further, then I'm looking up the value in the next place in the array, which is seven in this case. So in fact, uh, we could either do the square bracket notation or we can do this notation. Which one is easier to read? The, star, the square bracket thing or doing star with uh, add addition like this? Square bracket's a lot easier. Um, but it, just note that sometimes you'll actually see this and there's actually a reason for that. Um, it has, it, if you want to actually implement some algorithms in the standard library, you need to know how to actually do this because sometimes you don't have access to the square bracket operator or the square bracket operator could mean something else. So uh, there's something that's related to pointers that allows us to do something like this, and you should do it in those cases. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to do square bracket. Because it's just a lot easier, and most uh, structures use it in the way that you expect. So there are just many ways of looking up values in an array, essentially. OK, so we, that's exactly what we just said. And we started this last time. Uh, so this isn't really that important, but it's just you'll see this sometimes. So you might, we might as well just talk about it a little bit. Um, you can, because these are just integers, the pointers themselves are just integers, you could do uh, mathematical operations on them. So you can do plus plus, meaning move the pointer ahead one position, or minus minus, move it back one position. So it behaves the same like a normal integer. Uh, so there's nothing really special here. Um, I'm not sure why that's there. Uh, here you can do plus equals. So here, inst instead of doing plus plus, then plus plus again, we can just uh, add 2 to the pointer, and it moves it two places further. So it, it behaves in the exact way that we would expect it to. Um, we can do subtraction between two pointers. So sometimes um, you could have, instead of having one pointer at the beginning and one pointer further along like this example is, you can have one pointer at some location and then some other pointer at some other location. And if you do the subtraction of the difference of the two, then you can actually figure out how many bytes are in between. And then you can make some inference on some structure that way. I, I don't ever really see this, so you, uh, it's really rare that some this may happen, but you might actually see it happen. Um, in this case, because we moved val pointer up two places, 
then when we do the, the difference, the difference should be two, and that's what we actually get here. So um, it's just if you happen to not know what the actual difference is, this might actually come in handy. Okay, so we actually saw a way to initialize a pointer. So how did we initialize a pointer before? So like when we had int star putter equals what happened on the right side of the equals? What, what do we usually put there? Well, what we did before was we put the address of some variable because we want this pointer to point to something. So, and typically we're just going to have some uh, variable stored somewhere. I don't know what address it is. So, like, if you look at this source code, do you know what address that this is going to be stored in? No. In fact, you can't necessarily know where it is in general. So, what you do is you just say, I'm going to make a variable, and whatever uh, address it's stored at, I'm going to point to it. And let the compiler and operating system figure all, all that out for me. What address it actually is, and then populate the pointer with that address. So the way that we typically did it is this second example right here, where we just say uh, the address of some variable, have the pointer point to that thing, whatever that variable is. But sometimes you might actually not have the variable that you need it, uh, at that particular moment. Maybe the uh, variable is created at some later point. Or maybe uh, depending on the on what happens, the pointer can point to here or to over here. So maybe like from user input, you can say, um, if the user's input is valid, have it point to this variable. If it's not valid, point to this variable. And so you can't actually set it to anything. Uh, you can't set it to a variable necessarily because it actually might change. So, so there's a reason why I say the wrong way here. So let's actually see the wrong way. Don't ever code this, the first one, because uh, there's a much better way. So it's just that you, might, you will see this uh, all the place. So this is one way that people have initialized uh, pointers for a long time. And you do it by saying equals capital N, capital U, capital L, capital L, null. So anyone happen to know what null is? So we have neither zero or something. Any other guesses? Yeah. Invalid? It's supposed to mean invalid, yeah. Uh, anyone happen to know what null actually is defined to be in C++? It's actually defined to be zero, exactly zero. So what happens is if you try to dereference this pointer by doing the star on the pointer, if it's pointing to null, then your program crashes, as you might expect. Because null is supposed to mean um, we're uh, setting this to an invalid value at the start and then, and then later uh, populating it with a valid address. So, but here's the problem. Anyone see the problem with why we should, should not use null here? Again, what is null defined to be? Zero. What type is zero? Integer. So can I have a function take uh, an integer pointer? Uh, let's just say we have a function f that takes an integer pointer as its parameter. Can I pass null into that? Into that function? Yeah, because it's an integer pointer. What if I just pa what if I just have a function that takes an integer? Only an integer, not a pointer. Can I pass null? Yeah, because it's just an integer. So if we want this to mean it's an invalid value, I shouldn't be able to pass it to a function arbitrarily. But the thing is, a lot of programmers don't know better because null actually comes from C, which is a precursor to C++. So null is defined to be zero. So uh, just something for you to know. Um, yeah, so you have to populate it with something of the correct type. So 
this pointer on the front says I'm pointing to an int, but the issue is we're trying to set it to point to a float and ints aren't the same as floats. So that's why this won't work. So then for this first one, you may think, well, what is the right way? So the right way is using a, a recent version of C++, namely C++11. So there's something in C++11 called null pointer. So why do you think that null pointer is better than just using null? Again, what is null defined to be? Zero. Zero. So what do you think null pointer's difference is? No, no, it, it is is meant to be invalid, and it actually behaves the same. If I try to dereference this pointer right here, I still will have the program crash. So there's no actual difference from just uh, setting it and dereferencing it because the program crashes anyway. The difference here is null pointer is actually a type, a special type. It's not just like an integer or whatever. It's a special type. So if I have a function that takes a integer pointer, um, I can pass null pointer into it because null pointer can be converted essentially to any type of pointer. But if I have a function that just takes an integer no pointer, uh, integer no pointer, uh, you can't pass null pointer there because the type isn't the same. Whereas with null, it is zero meaning that it is an integer, so you could pass it incorrectly in that case. So uh, when it, if you need to set a pointer to be, uh, uh, you can't set it yet, and you will set it later, but you need to set some value to it, use null pointer, not null. So that's the right way to actually do it. Okay, uh, any questions on null pointer? Um, and in fact, you shouldn't actually use pointers like this at all. So you may think, okay, so why are you teaching us pointers then? So there are two reasons. One is you'll see pointers all over the place. So if you, if you come across something and you see star on a variable, you should go, ah, oh, that's a pointer. But in fact, there's a much better way to create pointers that is a lot safer and easier to work with. And we'll get to that at the end of the slides, but I'm just showing you uh, how to create a raw pointer like this. But don't actually create pointers like this. Okay, um, if we want to actually compare pointers, there are two uh, essential ways of doing that. I could think, well, uh, the way that we've been doing it is look up the values in some variables, check if they're the same. Well, if I have pointers, how do I look up the value in a pointer? So if I have a pointer pointing to something, how do I look up the value in it of what it's pointing to? Dereference. Yeah, do dereference, which is putting the star on front. So if I want to have two pointers, pointer one here and pointer two here, and I want to check if the contents of the, are the same, whatever they're pointing to, then I just do star pointer one equals equals star pointer two. But sometimes you may want to figure out whether they're pointing to the same thing or not. Or if, they're, if one is pointing to an address that's bigger than the address of the other one. Not the contents, but the actual addresses themselves. Well, in there you don't need any dereference. So you can just say if the pointer is equal to pointer two, then if that's true, they're pointing to the same thing. So why would you care about this? Why might you care about that? Like knowing that they're pointing to the same thing. Actually, that's the exact answer. So, <laughs> so here's the thing. So when your program quits, okay, so like the program's done. What does the operating system do with the, the memory that was used by your program? Marks it able to be utilized by some other program. Great. Well, what if we have two things pointing to the same location? Well, if I uh, can do this, then I can say, well, I got to free all three of these things, the value that is being pointed to and the two pointers that are pointing to it. 
Well, if, if I can say, well, uh, they're pointing at the same thing, then uh, if I delete the thing that's being pointed to, well, then I don't have to worry about the, the two pointers actually pointing to anything useful anymore because we just got rid of it because they're pointing to the same thing. Well, what happens here? Suppose that the operating system says, oh, I see this pointer right here. I'm going to be a helpful operating system, and I'm going to re uh, free up the memory of the thing I'm pointing to, and then the pointer itself. So I'm going to free up the pointer, uh, what it's being pointing to, and the pointer itself. I'm going to be helpful in that way. What about this other pointer that's pointing to it? The operating system could go, ah, I'm going to be a, another uh, helpful operating system. Look at this other pointer. Free up the thing that was just freed. What do you think happens? The program crashes. Because now we have something that's called a dangling pointer. It's not actually pointing to anything anymore because it was just freed up by the operating system. So if we can figure out, ah, uh, we have two pointers that are pointing to the same thing, then I only need to do one free of this location. I don't need, I can, I don't need to do two. So uh, sometimes you want to know whether things are, whether two pointers are pointing to the same location. Um, there's a much better mechanism for this. So instead of having to think about uh, which order are these pointers going to be freeing up things by the operating system, there's a much safer solution and you don't even have to think about it. And it's not with raw pointers. So again, I'm just showing you that you can see this sometimes. Okay, so what are the two ways that we have been passing values into functions? What are the two ways? By reference, by reference and by value. <clears throat> There's a third <clears throat> way. <laughs> uh, actually, there are four, but uh, we're going to talk about a third today, which is uh, passing it by a pointer. So instead of just saying, um, I'm going to pass it by value or by reference, I'm just going to pass it by pointer. Uh, yeah. So you can have a function like this. Instead of saying nothing on the pointer or, or sorry, nothing on the variable or a reference on the variable, I'm going to put a star on the variable. So here, um, I'm passing something by pointer. Whatever it is, it's by pointer. Then in the main function or wherever, we can do cn into, is this the value of po the pointer or the address of the pointer? It's the value because we have the star on the front and it's not the declaration of the pointer. So here we're actually setting the value of whatever the pointer is pointing to. And then, well, what is a pointer in general? It's an address. So whenever I call the function get num in this case, I need to pass an address. Well, can I just pass... Um, so there's actually an error in these slides, and it's not my error. <laughs> uh, we need to actually pass in an address. So let's just say here that we, well, it's actually not wrong, but it's incomplete. So let's just say we have an int num and pointer, and, and the pointer is looking at num like this. So we have an, a variable num. We have a pointer that's pointing to the address of num. So then we need to pass in an address. So uh, is this passing an address, uh, ampersand num, like this? Don't answer all at once. Is this passing an address? Yeah, because we have an ampersand on front of it. What's another way that I can pass in an, an address to this? Just the pointer. So that, that's another way I can do this too. So, as long as I'm passing an address in, that's all that matters because this function is expecting a pointer. Okay? So uh, you can do uh, address of the variable itself, or if you don't have it for whatever reason, just pass in the pointer itself because uh, we need, we're expecting a, uh, an address right here or a pointer. Yeah, go ahead. 
you were just like showing the example of showing that you can also pass a pointer over there. Notice you didn't put the asterisk. Would you put, would you usually put an asterisk over there? Uh, good point. So why did I not put an asterisk right here? Right. So here I'm passing the address, the pointer itself. Whereas if I said star pointer, I'm passing the value in. But I need to pass an address. So that's why I said putter like this. Because uh, I'm passing a pointer, aka an address. So I just need to pass in the pointer or address. Or I can just do ampersand num like that. Yeah. So why did you put the star in the uh, function header? The, the star for the pointer? Because like if it's an address that it's receiving, doesn't that point to the value in the address? So, so here it's a declaration. Yeah. So the declaration of a pointer means I have to put a star there saying it is a pointer. But it's not point. It, it, it's not doing a dereference there. If inside, so good question. So if inside the function somewhere I say star pointer there, that is doing a dereference. So it's in the declaration where the star is necessary to say that it's a pointer, but it's not doing a dereference there. If I'm using it normally, like a normal variable later with a star, that's a dereference. Other questions. Okay, so this is actually used all the time in the standard library. So if I want to swap two values, um, then what you would want to do here is, um, uh, so I can't just set the, the value that's stored at this pointer x uh, and swap it with the, va the value at y because then I'll overwrite a value unnecessarily. So what we do instead is we create a temporary, have x be assigned to the temporary, then overwrite x, x's value with y's value. Now temp has the original value of x, so then I assign the, that original value back to y. So in fact, we can do swaps this way. And in fact, in the standard library, this is almost the same thing as the real implementation of swap. So if I want to swap two arbitrary things, this is almost identical to the actual implementation, which is pretty cool. So if I want to swap uh, two, uh, the location of two arrays, for example, or at least the things that are being pointed to by the arrays, then I can do something similar like this. Um, there's a little bit, bit wor more work there, but if I want to swap the values at the beginning of two arrays, then you can just pass it in like this. So then um, if num1 is a variable, either in an array or not, it doesn't matter. If I have num2 in a, uh, a different array or a different variable, it doesn't matter. If I pass in the addresses of the two variables right here, then, uh, then what will happen is after this function right here, what is the value of num1? The, just the variable itself after this function if it swaps the values between the two variables yeah negative three and num twos of course will be two so we can do swaps uh, like this just by using a pointer and then you may think well okay so so what we can do something like this and avoid this pointer nonsense Right, And then uh, I can just pass in num1 and num2 like this. So for references, we don't even need the pointer. We don't even need to say the reference uh, when we make the function call down here. Uh, we just need to say reference at the function's header, and then that's all we need. We don't need to do any dereference. We don't need to do anything like that. Um, so you may think, okay, why do we need a pointer send if we can just do... Um, uh, references like this, um, there are there is a situation that we'll see in, in a bit where you actually need pointers, and there's no getting around it. Um, and so in those situations, you do need to pass a pointer along because there's no other way to do it, unfortunately. Uh, but most of the time, you should use just reference with the ampersand, not a, a pointer. So if you want to pass in an array, remember, what is the 
name of the array itself. If we have an array called ARR, what is ARR itself? Yeah, yeah, it's just an address. And, and in other words, it's, it is a what? Pointer, it's just a pointer. So if we have a function that's expecting a pointer, I can just pass in the name of the array and because it's a pointer. Um, yeah, so it could be the address of the first element of the array is one way you can go, or you can just pass in the address of the array, which is the name of the array itself. Um, and you can use uh, square brackets or pointer arithmetic as before. There's no difference here. So now let's actually get into something that's a little strange. So remember const? So what is const? It can't change the value. So let's just say we have a really important piece of data right here and we don't want to modify it. So we want to put it into some variable const or something. Well, what if it's like a lot of data and we don't want to make a copy? Well, what we can do is save it to a pointer and then if we need to move the pointer around, the pointer is easy to move. The, the contents aren't easy to move, but I can just move the pointer between variables and have it still point at the important information. Well, here's the thing. Should the pointer itself be constant? Not the value it's pointing to, but the, the pointer itself be constant. Maybe, maybe we don't want to have the, the pointer go to another variable and that variable now has access to the important information. Maybe we want to make the pointer itself constant. Or maybe we could have the situation where, yeah, you could modify the data all you want, but I want to have the pointer constant and have the data potentially changeable, so not const. So this is actually uh, kind of convoluted in some sense. So if you want to have a pointer pointing to something that doesn't change, but the pointer itself can change, then you want a pointer to constant. So the way that you read this is, uh, you look at the pointer and you go in a counterclockwise fashion. So you start at the pointer right here. So it's definitely a pointer, but what is it pointing to? So what you do is you go counterclockwise around like a spiral. Um, you, you go counterclockwise and then what do we find next? Const double. So in this case, the pointer is pointing to a uh, const double. And then we keep going, and it's called rates. So it's a pointer that's pointing to a const double, and it's uh, called rates. So uh, th that's how you would actually create a pointer that the pointer itself can change, but it's pointing to something that can't change. Okay, any questions on that? So if you uh, think that that was kind of convoluted, hold on to your hats. <laughs> so what if we want the, the pointer itself to not change? The, the stuff it's pointing to can change, but the pointer itself can't be assigned to a different variable. It's just uh, a pointer that can't change then you want a constant pointer. So what you do here is, do you have, yeah, so this is easier to read. So here, again, you do a uh, counterclockwise uh, fashion. So, um, but here you actually go down instead of up. So you go down from the pointer and you go and you find, you see, oh, const. So this pointer right here is, uh, the pointer itself is constant. So the pointer can't change, and you keep going, and you see, oh, here's an int. Oops. Uh, here's an int. Is the int itself constant? No. So this is a pointer that can't change, but it's pointing to a normal int that can change. 
So the pointer can't be assigned to anything else, to some other variable, but the thing it's pointing to can change. Ready to repeat ourselves? <laughs> so what if you want a pointer that can't change and the data itself can't change? Then you want a constant pointer to a constant int. Enough cots in there? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so here you go down like before, you have a pointer, and you see, oh, it's const, so the pointer itself can't change, and then you keep going and you find, oh, const int on the front. And so this is a pointer that can't be assigned to another variable, so it's const, because it's const, and um, it's pointing to uh, an integer that can't change. Okay, so we can either, we have four situations here. So we can have a uh, pointer can change, value can change. Or we could have pointer stay the same, value change. Or we can have pointer change, value stay the same. Or both the value and pointer stay the same. So there are four possibilities there. Um, it, so it depends on your situation. Do you want the data to change or do you want the pointer to change? Depending on your circumstances, you may want one situation or another. But any questions on the differences between the four? Yeah. Um, so you already have like the value established and you want the address, but you didn't take the pointer to it yet. How would you get the address? Well, if it has a name, so like NUM, like some name, you can just put ampersand on the front and that gives you the address. And then you can assign it to a, a, a pointer. And you can create a pointer right there. Yes. Other questions? So now let's get into something dangerous. You guys feeling dangerous? No. <laughs> so, uh, I'm feeling dangerous. So let's actually do something dangerous. So. There's, there's nothing actually dangerous here. It's just that it's really, really hard to make it correct, the, the code that we're about to do. And we'll see why. So remember when I said that um, uh, incorrectly, that if you try to see in an integer and create an array with that many integers in it, that it shouldn't work because when you create an array, it should know the number of elements at compile time. And if you see in something, do you know the value at compile time? No. So, um, but we found out that uh, compilers do different things based off of that. Um, they offer things called extensions off of that. Um, it actually uh, is not supposed to work. And the way that you're supposed to do it, when you have a number of elements that you don't know at compile time, is dynamic memory allocation, which is what we're going to do here. So, what, so this is actually the scenario that I was referring to, where you have to use a pointer. This is the scenario. So what, what do you do here? So what you do is you say, uh, you're going to create a pointer, in this case, a pointer to a double. And we're going to set it equal to a new double. So this keyword new is something we haven't seen before. It's new. <laughs> so here we're making a new double. So this, when you use new like this, it's dynamic memory allocation. So it's not created. The memory location is not created when you compile the program, but when you run the program. So every time you run the program, this could be at a different location every single time. It has to reallocate it every time you run the program. Okay? And um, yeah, so that's how you create it. If you want to create an array of, of uh, doubles while the program's running, not at compile time, again, you use new, double, and then a number of elements that you want. So in this case, it's 25. So the program may terminate if there is not sufficient memory. Because I can say, well, this is going to be allocated at runtime. So the compiler can't say, yeah, you're, you're an idiot. You're trying to allocate too many integers right now. But what if the user says, oh, I want to allocate 10 billion integers? What do you think would happen? 
the, the, the operating system is going to say, oh, I'm going to try to generate 10 billion integers, and there's not enough room in my computer to actually do that. So the program or your computer actually crash as a result. So uh, the program probably is going to terminate before the operating system would. So it may terminate if there's not sufficient memory. And then there's actually no difference between a normal pointer and these pointers. They're exactly the same. They're just pointers. So whenever you use new like this, it's going to do this dynamic memory allocation, whatever that is, and it's going to give you back an address of where that thing actually is. So, uh, and then you, for that reason, you have to save it to a pointer. So, uh, yeah, that's how you create a variable using dynamic memory allocation. I may use the term created on the heap. So whenever I say created on the heap, that means dynamic memory allocation, okay? Or the program's running, that sort of thing. If I say stack allocation, that means not dynamic memory allocation. Although I'm kind of lying a little bit, but they're basically dynamic memory allocation happens while the program's running and you, it has to reallocate every time. Whereas stack allocation is when you do it during compilation. And so there's, there's a fundamental difference between the two. So here's an example. So let's just say that uh, count, so count right here, is it initialized using uh, static, uh, sorry, uh, stack memory or heap memory? Just by looking at this. The heap, and how can you know? It's got the word new in it, good. So uh, what about the array pointer right here? It's also on the heap because it has the keyword new there. And uh, uh, here we're dereferencing count. So if the user says 100 right here, then we're going to have 100 uh, uh, elements in this array right here. And then here we can just uh, access the contents of the array exactly the same as before. There's no difference. Uh, here. So it's not like I have to do a special notation here. It's exactly the same, which is nice. Okay, any questions on this example? Okay, so the issue is here that with stack allocated memory, the when the program quits, it releases stack memory no problem for reasons I can get into if you're curious, but uh, stack memory is a lot easier to access than uh, dynamic memory because with dynamic memory you have to go through the pointer whereas if you don't have a pointer it's stack allocated and the location is actually right next to all the work that the program's actually doing uh, in the CPU and memory and all that stuff. So it's actually a lot easier to deallocate uh, stack memory. Whereas with dynamic memory, you have to do it yourself, okay? So how do you actually do it? So if you have a normal variable that's on the heap, so dynamic, dynamically allocated, then at some point, you have to say delete explicitly. So delete is a, a new keyword also. So if count is like here, where it's initialized on the heap, like this with new, then at some point, usually at the very end of the program, but we'll see why you shouldn't necessarily do that, usually near the end of the program, you say delete that variable, okay? And what happens is it frees it up for the rest of the, the operating system to use, which is nice. If you have uh, an array then that's allocated on the heap using dynamic memory, then you have to say delete with square brackets and nothing inside the square brackets. To say, I'm going to delete this array. And then it'll go through the array, deleting everything from the heap and releasing it back to the operating system. So uh, it only makes sense to use delete with dynamic memory because uh, non-dynamic memory is automatically freed for you. So uh, you may think, well, uh, that's great. So every time I'm going to have a dynamic memory variable, I have to put delete somewhere. Okay? Does that sound sensible? 
Yeah. Will the program not compile if you don't use delete? No, uh, so great question. Will the program not compile if we don't use delete? It will compile. So what will happen is, I'm not exactly sure, but what I'm pretty sure happens is you're going to dynamically allocate this variable. You don't have delete. The program quits. It's going to stay in memory, and it can't be deleted because it could be held by some other process in the system. So this memory is actually being used up right now by a program that doesn't is not actually running. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so most modern operating systems will figure this out for you. So it'll delete it for you if you're irresponsible, but you can't necessarily guarantee that's going to happen. Yeah, so that's actually uh, a good segue to something uh, that I want to show you uh, as to why I said that this is dangerous. So why is this dangerous? So let's just say that we have an integer n, cn n, and then we create a... Uh, uh, an array on the heap like this. So we create a new memory on the heap and then we do stuff and then I'm a good programmer and I say delete array at the end. So if the program was exactly like this, is there anything wrong with the program? This is not a trick question. No. Because this is exactly what we're supposed to do. If we have a variable on the heap, which is ARR in this case, and it's an array, I have to say delete with the square brackets at some later point. No problem. Uh, by the way, do I have to say delete n? No. Is it, a, and the reason is why? It's not dynamically allocated. And you don't have to do that with dynamic, uh, with non-dynamic variables. Great. So let's just make the program a little bit more complex. So let's just say that um, if the user entered uh, less than 100, then we want to quit the program. So if the integer n was less than 100, then uh, return 0. So quit the program, essentially. With the program as is, is there an issue? Yeah, what's the issue? Right, so if the user enters, say, 50 numbers, then we're going to quit the program and not free up the memory that we used. So then we're a good programmer, and we say delete in here. But maybe we have some other if statement in here that happens, and then here we also return zero. Don't I have to put delete square bracket everywhere that we could possibly quit the pro uh, quit the program? Is, isn't this going to be a big nightmare if this program is sufficiently complicated? Yeah. yeah. So that's actually a, a big problem. And we're going to actually solve it using something called a smart pointer. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually going to skip right to it and then return to the other stuff because smart pointers are so important. If you're going to be using pointers, always, always, always use smart pointers. Never use a raw pointer like this. So uh, and I'll return to the other slides next time. So. Uh, what's a smart pointer? It's a, a pointer that behaves like a normal object, like a normal string or anything else. So th think about vector or string. Could vectors grow arbitrarily big? Yeah. How does it uh, reallocate the storage every single time? It uses dynamic memory allocation. But why did we never say delete a vector? It's using dynamic memory allocation. It's not, well, built in in a header where? So what, here's what actually happens. Vector has dynamic memory allocation in it. When the vector goes out of scope or the program quits, the vector's destructor is called. The vector's destructor is called 
and inside the destructor, the delete is called, which is awesome. And we'll talk about that next time.